Today, I am talking on air pollution and cardiometabolic connection. The last couple of years has witnessed spectacular advances in the field of air pollution and in the availability of data incriminating air pollution to cardiometabolic connection. We have known for years that air pollution is an established risk factor for pulmonary disease, and there's nothing new about it. But it is also a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, and this is not widely disseminated even among the cardiologists. And of late, it has also become a risk factor for metabolic disease like diabetes and MAFLD. Distressingly enough, there is no specific treatment and prevention, prevention and prevention is the only treatment for air pollution. Artificial rain is only a temporary solution to minimize air pollution. Currently, we are amidst a chuck review of pollution as you can see on the slide, but today I'm going to talk only on air pollution. Air pollution implies contamination of indoor or outdoor environment by any chemical, physical or biological agent that modifies the natural characteristics of the atmosphere that is harmful to human being and other species. Air pollution can be outdoor air pollution or indoor air pollution. And this slide shows the causes of outdoor pollution. As you can see, most of these are human made. Occasionally, we have natural sources like wildfire smoke, volcano eruption, dust storm, and lightning. These are the four major culprits of air pollution. Vehicular traffic, which is rampant in metros, construction, power plants, agriculture, including stubble burning. This shows the causes of indoor pollution. And the important causes are wood burning in chulas, coal burning, dung fuel, and so on. So what are various pollutions which are rampant in the air? There are three types of pollutants. Particulate matter, coarse particles, PM10 to 2.5. Then we have fine particles, <coughs> less than PM2.5, and ultrafine less than 0 0.1 micrometers. Then we have a panoply of gases, <clears throat> sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, nitric oxide, carbon monoxide, ozone, volatile organic compounds, and several heavy metals like cadmium, lead, mercury, chromium, zinc, and cobalt. Before understanding air pollution, we must also understand smog. A smog was is a mixture of smoke and fog which form droplets that remain suspended in the air and form a yellow haze, which hampers visibility and contributes to air pollution. Smog is formed in pollutants like nitric oxide, sulfur dioxide, VOCs, ozone are released from the automobile industries and burning of fossil fuels and are interacting with light. We have witnessed the Great London smog in December 1952, and 4,000 people died from respiratory effects, and the smog was caused by coal combustion from various sources. Temperature inversion is also a very important phenomenon. Normally, the movement of air is warm to cold because warm air has less density compared to the cold air above, and this helps in reducing air pollution and promotes better air quality in the atmosphere. But in long winter nights, the surface gears are that school very quickly as the moon is heat. So if the layer just above the earth is warmer and the layer above this warm layer is cold. And this cold air acts as a lid to prevent movement of air upwards and the pollution get trapped in it, leads to poor air quality and comes to air pollution. So why we are so much concerned about air pollution? Seven million people die prematurely every year from air pollution, 34% from ischemic heart disease, 20% from stroke, which means 54% patient, of patients die from a cardiovascular disease. Air pollution is a poorly addressed major risk factor for cardiovascular disease. The remaining one, 19% die from COPD, 7% lung cancer, and 21% from pneumonia. All of us know 
air pollution is a risk factor for pulmonary disease. And whenever we talk to the cardiothoracic surgeons in cities like Delhi, where pollution, air pollution is rampant, they often tell us that the lungs which we used to see 20 years ago, which were pink, now are getting black and black. As you can see in this slide, the normal lung and the lung exposed to chronic air pollution. And this leads to asthma, pneumonia, lung cancer, and so on. Now, air pollution is also a risk factor for cardiometabolic diseases. And the culprit for this is particular matter 2.5. This particulate matter 2.5 is powered to cross the alveolar blood barrier and it reaches the systemic circulation and produces several distressing effects on various parts of the body. The normal PM25 per missile in India is 40 micrograms, whereas as per WHO is only 5 microgram per cubic meter. But in most of the cities like Delhi, it's near about 100 micro, microgram per square meter. Now, when this PM2.5 particles enters the vessel wall, it makes the vessel wall stiff, results in production of hypotension, it initiates and perpetuates inflammation, results in development of atherosclerosis, acute myocardial infarction, and so on. It also directly damages the myocytes and results in arrhythmias and heart failure. And because of its pro-inflammatory effects, it also increases increased oxidative stress, it results in production of diabetes and several other diseases like stroke, CKD, epigenetic changes, and other. And this shows the perils of air pollution, as you can see. Uh, besides this effects on the hearts and lung, it also affects the pancreas. It's also incriminating in colonic cancer and kidney cancer. And uh, it is also incriminated in uh, cognitive decline and even macular degeneration. Air pollution and hypertension. It is said that long and short term exposure to increased PM2.5 percolate matter is associated with elevation of blood pressure and risk of developing hypertension in urban India. Every increase of 25 microgram per square meter of PM25 increases blood pressure by 3.5 to 5 millimeter mercury, depending on the BMI. Achieving national ambient air quality standards can potentially decrease the prevalence of hypertension by 15% in urban Delhi. And even reducing PM2.5 from the current 100 to 75 can reduce prevalence by 5%. And this is an important study of 5,000 patients in Delhi, which shows then there's increased exposure to PM25. You can see by the end of year, the systolic blood pressure is increased by 3.3. And this shows the hazard ratio. As time passes on, the hazard ratio for development of hypertension increases. And it shows that air pollution increases the population level of mean systolic blood pressure at 3 to 5 millimeters, both in the short term and long term. Air pollution is also linked to mortality. This is a very interesting analysis uh, from Delhi again. Death records collected from 2010 to 16, 700,000 non-accidental were reported. And for every 25 microgram square meter increase in the exposure of PUM 2.5, there was a 0.8% increase in daily non-accidental death. And if you examine the data 60 or over, this figure escalates to 1.5%. And reducing exposure from the median of 91.1 microgram per square meter to WHO guideline levels would have averted seven deaths a day during the entire period. And here you can see elderly are more adversely affected, males are more adversely affected. And as the level of PM25 increased, there's steep rise. Uh, till uh, uh, 70 or so, then some rise and then starts getting plateaued. Air pollution, does it have a metabolic connection? The answer is yes. And is air pollution a new risk factor for development of diabetes? Again, yes. For several years, the increased prevalence of type 2 diabetes was linked with obesity, but now we know air pollution is also an important factor for development of diabetes. And one of the other reasons why diabetes is occurring in epidemic proportions in our country. Air pollution produces diabetes in two ways. It increases insulin resistance by pro-inflammatory action and increases oxidative stress. And the PM25 particles deposited in the pancreas damages the beta cells and results in decreased insulin production. And this is an, again a very interesting study. 12,000 patients studied in Delhi and Chennai. It was seen that every 10 microgram per square meter increase in the annual average of PM25 level increase the risk of diabetes by 
Air pollution and diabetes, is it time to get active now? Yes. What about MAFLD? Air pollution is now shown to be a risk factor for MAFLD also, and this is a cross-sectional study of 90,000 patients, and of these 90,000, 79,000 patients uh, had NAFLD, and you can see for every 10 microgram increase in the three-year exposure uh, to particulate matter one in nitrous oxide, you can see hazard ratio for uh, NFLD is increased, particularly if the patient is obese or if the patient has a high level of alcoholic intake or has a, a high level of smoking. This is again in the data with from 17,000 patients, 4640 patient in NFLD. And as you can see, as the level of uh, PM25 increases, the chances of NFLD is more in lean, more in younger population, and more in women. And this is how uh, air pollution produces NFLD. It uh, increases inflammation, it increases oxidative stress, and so on. How to assess air pollution? AQI, air quality index, is the way to assess air pollution. And you can see this is the CPCB 2014 data. If it is within 0 to 15, the color is good. 50 to 100 is moderate, but if between 100 to 150, sensitive individual can be adversely affected. 150 to 200 is unhealthy, and 200 to 300 is very unhealthy, and if it is 500, it is hazardous. These are the various uh, parameters which are utilized for assessing the AQI. And we now also have a small and portable monitor which uh, produces real-time data for AQI and 2.5. And uh, PM25 can also be assessed by satellite data, as you can see in this uh, interesting slide. Uh, you can have the live data of every month from 2010 to 2016, and you can see uh, the air pollution is maximum in the winter months. Delhi has one of the highest level of air pollution compared to any city in the world. And uh, these are the levels of AQI in different parts of our country. And these are the lists of cities with best air quality in India. And AQI uh, across several cities is mentioned in this. Uh, the CARS cohort is ongoing, which is addressing various cardiometabolic risk factors, including air pollution. Uh, therefore, how do we prevent air pollution? I think all of us are aware of the measures to prevent air pollution as they are shown in this slide, but it only requires execution so we can reduce uh, vehicular pollution, as seen this slide, reducing industry emissions, household construction, and parali burning, which is uh, rampant in the northern areas. The parali can be utilized uh, to form a fertilizer, or it can be utilized to form decorable items, and there are other measures also. Indoor pollution, again, uh, all of us know the preventive measures. They are highlighted on this slide. Uh, but they requires execution. Air purifiers are also available in the pure HF trial is ongoing to assess the effectiveness of indoor air uh, purifiers on heart failure outcomes. Artificial rain is utilized as a temporary measure to minimize air pollutions. Uh, and uh, this requires cloud with minimum moisture of 40%. And it's only a temporary solution to minimize air pollution. The silver iodide is released from the plane, as you can see. The silver iodide particle reach the targeted cloud here. Silver iodide acts in formation of ice crystal. Now the ice crystal are too heavy to remain in the air. The ice crystal, crystal fall towards the ground, often melting on their way to form rain. Pollution is a major inadequately addressed cardiopulmonary metabolic risk factor and is a serious ignored uh, public issue and needs urgent focus and attention from all of us. Earth is the only planet known so far to harbor life. There's nowhere else, at least in the near future, where we could migrate. And it is therefore mandatory to have courses of ours to minimize air pollution. Thank you very much for your kind attention.